Hello friends, welcome to the next session. This is going to be the last session of my chapter 2. And over here we are going to convert a milli machine to a Moore machine. Now this problem is going to be somewhat tricky. So let's get started and try to understand. We have a total of 3 steps to be followed over here. My step number 1 says if the output symbol along with the incoming transitions to a state are same, focus on the word same. If the output symbol along with the incoming transition to a state are same, then assign that symbol to that state. My second point says, if the output symbol along with the incoming transition to a state are not the same. So previously it was same, now we are talking of different states. So if the output symbol along with the incoming transition to a state are not the same, then we are going to split that state as many times as the output symbol, which each state showing a different output. So basically, first point was a very simple point. Second point says we have to split the state. And let's look at the third point also. So my third point over here says, if there are no incoming transitions to a state, then any output symbol can be assigned to that state. So remember first point where the output symbols were same, second point where the output symbols were not same and third point which was talking of the start state. Now I am very sure you all might be confused with what are the three lines of the procedure as written. Once we move on to the problem, we are going to correlate it with each of the steps and get a deeper understanding of it. So let's dive into the problem directly. So the problem over here given is the following milli machine. So the problem here has the following milli machine and we are asked to convert this milli machine to Moore machine. If you observe over here we have the outputs associated along the edges. Therefore we have Q0 on 0 gives output A and goes to Q1. Similarly I have Q2 on 0 gives output B and goes to Q4. My Q4 on 1 gives output A and remains in Q4. Lastly, one last transition, my Q4 on 0 gives output B and goes to Q3. So such a machine is called as a milli machine. Now we have to convert this milli machine to Moore machine. Now let's go to our step 1 and try to understand what are we going to do. Now these steps are need not going to be applied in a sequential manner. It purely depends. But to start with, we can go to step 1. So it says, so my step 1 says, if the output symbol along with the incoming transition to a state are same, then assign that output symbol to that state. Let's go to the problem. If I observe over here in the problem, for my state Q0, do I have any incoming transitions? No. Since I do not have any incoming transitions, I will keep Q0 as it is. So I say, let me sketch my Q0 as it is. And since it is going to be a Moore machine, I am leaving some space over here because I am yet to add the output. Let's go on to Q1. Now, if I look at Q1, and if I look at all of the incoming edges to Q1, I see one incoming edge to Q1 is this, which is 0 slash A. Another incoming edge is 1 slash A and that's it. So we have two edges, 0 slash A and 1 slash A. Everywhere we are observing slash A slash A. That is, all the incoming transitions to my state Q1 are throwing output A. Therefore, we assign output A with Q1. Here we have Q2. If I observe in Q2, in Q2 I see 1 slash B and 0 slash B as the incoming transitions. And that's it. So I have 1 slash B and 0 slash B. So slash B slash B is common. That is all the incoming transitions to my state Q2 are throwing the output B. Therefore I say I can assign output B to my Q2 state. So I write Q2 slash B over here going back to the problem. 
Now, if I observe my Q3 state, in Q3, I see that Q3, I have one incoming transition 1 slash A, another incoming transition 0 slash A, and there is a third incoming transition 0 slash B. So, we have 1 slash A, 0 slash A, and 0 slash B. So, slash A, slash A, slash B. Previously, we had either only A's incoming or only B's incoming, but over here, we have both A's and B's as the incoming transition. So, in this particular case, we have to go back to the procedure and see what needs to be done. So, if I go to procedure point number two, I see that it states, if the output symbol along with the incoming transitions to a state are not the same as we had the case, output symbols are A and B, that is we have two distinct symbols. So, if the output symbol along with the incoming transitions to the state are not the same, then split that state as many times as the output symbol which each state producing a different output. So, it says in that case we have to split that state. Now, let me clarify this in the problem itself. Going back to the problem, I see that in Q3, I have 1 slash A, 0 slash A and 0 slash B as the incoming transition. So, since slash A and slash B are the incoming transitions, that is we have two different outputs, we are going to split this state twice. So, we have 0 slash A, 1 slash A, 0 slash B. Therefore, Q3 is going to be split twice. How do I split it? Going to the problem, I write. My Q3 will be splitted. Let's call the first state as Q3A and this is the output A that it is going to throw. Then I have one more state over here which is Q3B and this is going to throw the output B. Similarly, my state Q4. Moving to the problem we have in Q4. I have 0 slash B as incoming, 1 slash B as incoming and 1 slash A as incoming. So again I have 2 B's and 1 A's. The count is not important that is the number of the counts of B are greater than A or vice versa or they are equal. What is important is to count the number of distinct output incoming transitions. So I see over here there are A's and B's as incoming. So as we did in the state of Q3. We are going to do the same instead of Q4. So I write over here. So I write over here my Q4 split it as Q4 A throwing a output A, Q4 B throwing a output B. So having assigned the output symbols to the state Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, we have to now think of what will be assigned to my Q0. Now we all know that Q0 is the start state and the procedure has still one point left over there. So let's go on to the point 3 of the procedure. Now if I go to point 3 I see that if there are no incoming transitions to a state specifically over here we are talking of no incoming transitions that is specifically I am talking of the start state only. So, if there are no incoming transitions to a state, then any output symbol can be assigned to that state. So, you can assign any of the output symbols. Now, any doesn't mean actually any from the alphabet. So, if I observe in the problem, my output states are A's and B's only. So, let's assign either A or B in the final solution. So, I have a over here. So, I am considering A. Now, we have to look into the problem again. So, going back to the problem, I see I have to just find out what all are going to be the incoming transitions. So, if I observe my Q1 and look at the incoming transitions to Q1. I see that one incoming transition is going to come from Q0 to Q1 on 0 slash A. Specifically, it means Q0 on getting a 0 throws output A and goes to Q1. Therefore, we draw Q0 to Q1 and the symbol is going to be 0. 
looking back again in Q1 in the problem, if I observe Q1, so to Q1, I also have an incoming transition from Q2. So Q2 says Q2 on 1 is going to go to Q1. Q2 on 1 is going to go to Q1. Which Q1? That Q1 which is throwing the output A. Fortunately, we just have a single Q1 over here. So the things are going to be simple. So I say Q2, Q2 on receiving a 1 goes to Q1 that throws an output A. Going back to the problem. Am I able to observe any more incoming transitions to Q1? 0 slash A, 1 slash A, all are done. So let's move on to my state Q2. If I observe Q2, Q2 has one incoming transition coming from Q0 which says 1 slash B. That is Q0 on 1 goes to that Q2 which is going to throw output B. So we draw a transition from Q0 to Q2B. So Q0 to Q2B on 1 going to that Q2B which is throwing the output B. So in the problem we see Q1 to Q2 on receiving a 0 throwing the output B. So I have a transition from Q1 to Q2. Now the question over here is from which Q1 in the solution are we going to which Q2? Fortunately, we have a single Q1 in my entire solution set that is Q1A and I do have a single Q2 in the entire solution that is Q2B. Therefore, Q1 on 0 that is Q1A on 0 will be going to that Q2 which is throwing the output B. So, we draw it in the solution. This on getting a 0 is going to that Q2 which is going to throw an output B. Now coming on to the most tricky part of the problem. So if I observe in the problem now the incoming transitions to my state Q3. But before moving to Q3 just observe in the solution state that my Q3 is splitted twice. One is Q3A that is giving output A and another is Q3B that is giving output B. So in the problem I see that the first incoming transition to my Q3 is going to be coming from Q1. You can assume anything but I am assuming the simplest of it so that we can go from the most simple to the trickiest part. So I see over here Q1 on 1 is going to that Q3 which is throwing output A. Because the output associated with Q3 is A. Therefore, I say there will be an incoming transition coming from Q1 and there is only one Q1. But it will go to that Q3 which is going to throw the output A. So, since we have two Q3s over here, one is Q3A throwing output A, another is Q3B throwing output B. Among these two states, it will be going to that Q3 which is throwing the output A. So, we draw. Q1 on receiving a 1 is going to that Q3 which is throwing the output A. Let's look at the next incoming transition. If I observe my transition which is a cyclic transition on my Q3. Here I see that Q3 on 0 gives output A and come back to Q3. But how are we going to represent in the Moore machine? Over here, when I say something is coming out of Q3, that clearly indicates that I have to draw the arrows outside of Q3. And since there are two Q3s over here, the arrows are going to come out of both the Q3s. Now the incoming transition to Q3 says, on receiving a 0, it is going to go to that Q3 which is going to throw output A. Therefore, I write in the solution, two incoming transitions as well as two outgoing transitions. So one outgoing transition will be from Q3A, another will be from Q3B. So Q3A on 0 is going to that Q3A that is throwing the output A and Q3B on 0 will be going to that Q3 which is throwing the output A. Therefore over here I see two transitions for a single input symbol 0. 
and of course that is the way it has to be going ahead to the next incoming transition the next incoming transition to my q3 seems to be coming from q4 in the problem and that is 0 slash b coming to q3 so if i observe over here since the transition is coming from Q4 and my Q4 is splitted twice, Q4A and Q4B, therefore, I'll be having two arrows, one coming from Q4A and another coming from Q4B. Therefore, I say Q4 on receiving 0 will be going to that Q3 which is throwing the output B. So, I mark in the solution. It is going to that Q3 which is throwing the output B. So it is going to go over here. And on incoming transition 0. So I say this on 0 goes over here. And Q4B on 0 also goes to that Q3 which is throwing the output B. Next one. The next incoming transition to Q4 is the one which is coming from q3 so q3 on 1 goes to q4 and throws output b how do we read this i say there are going to be transitions coming from q3 and since q3 is splitted i say there are going to be transitions coming from q3 a and q3 b and where are they going to go they are going to go to that q4 which is going to throw an output b so let's mark it in the solution I have coming from Q3 A and Q3 B 1 coming from Q3 A is a 1 and coming from Q3 B is a 1 and it is going to that Q4 which is throwing the output B. Next I see a cyclic transition over my state Q4. So I say over here that there are going to be outgoing transitions from Q4 that is outgoing transitions from Q4 A and Q4B both but it is going to land to that Q4 which is throwing the output A. So let's mark it on receiving a 1 from Q4. I have two incoming transitions and two outgoing transitions one which is going out and coming back to Q4A on getting a 1 Another which is coming from Q4B on getting a 1 and going to Q4A throwing output A. Coming back to the problem, is there any further incoming transition to my Q4? If I observe the problem, I do not have any suitable incoming transition from my Q4. So since there are no incoming transitions left to any of the states, we say that this is the end of the problem. Let's look at the solution once again. So if I observe, incoming transitions to my Q0 are nothing. Therefore, Q0 has no incoming transitions. Whereas my Q1 and Q2 were not splitted because all the output associated with those states were same. While my Q3 and Q4 needed a split because the outputs associated with them were not the same. So this is the procedure to convert a given milli machine to a Moore machine. See you in the next session where we are going to start the new chapter called as grammars. Till then, thank you very much.